I think one of my greatest strengths as a prop maker is that I'm always looking for ways to get good effects out of common materials, and the cheaper, the better. Sure, it'd be great to have everything custom made out of industrial grade materials, but for most of us that's just not feasible, and not necessary either. So this is an idea I got from watching the opening credits of my favorite horror host, Sven Gulli. I always loved the look of these things flanking the title. Their actual identity is a bit of a mystery though. They're shaped like transformer bushings, but appear to be generating electricity, not insulating against it. So they're acting more like Tesla coils, but don't really look like them. So some sort of reverse polarity bushing pylon? Reverse the polarity. He's reversed the polarity! Well, even though I didn't know what it was or even what to call it, I did know that I wanted to make something just like it. So I did, and for less than 30 bucks, uh, with parts from Walmart, Hobby Lobby, and Home Depot. Uh, plus one piece of trash I pulled out of the recycling bin, and one special order from eBay. So sit tight and see how I made what I'm calling a Mad Scientist Power Pylon. There are relatively few pieces to this. This is just an empty coffee can. Uh, these are clear plastic plates. Inside is a plastic tube cover for a fluorescent light bulb. Uh, this is an empty plastic ball used for making Christmas ornaments. And then the one specialty part I had to order, green LED icicle lights. It's all pretty mundane stuff. And that works to your advantage because if you screw up, it's not that hard to get new parts and start all over. Which I did, twice. This is technically Power Pylon Mark III. You'll also need some clear glue to hold a few things together. Now I don't recommend using crazy glue or Loctite for this because the fumes tend to give clear plastic a frosted look that I didn't want. Uh, so I tried this instead. This is Gorilla Glue Clear Grip Contact Adhesive and found that it works great for this. Tool-wise, I used a Dremel with a drill bit and a drum sander and a drill with a one and a quarter inch hole saw and a cone grinder. I also used some silver spray paint and that was it. If you've seen my power core DIY video, then you're familiar with LED icicle lights. If not, give it a look or I don't know, Google it or whatever. I tried a bunch of different lights in this prop and I decided that the falling icicle style would work best for what I wanted, so I went back on eBay and ordered another set, uh, this time in green, which cost about $13. These icicles were smaller than in the first set I bought, only about four and a half inches long, so I stacked them side by side and just held them together with some clear tape. The end result was a 25 inch long wand looking thing that fits neatly inside the clear tube. Even though it's sold as a 4 foot tube, it's really only 46 inches long, but that's still longer than what I need. Through trial and error, I know that I can safely cut this tube in half in order to prepare it for the next step. Now these tubes are a little flimsy, so I took one of the halves, slid it lengthwise down the center, and wrapped it around the other half to make it twice as thick, and therefore a little sturdier. One thing you'll need to note is that these tubes are one and a quarter inches in diameter, which you'll need to know when drilling holes later on. thing you'll need to do is drill holes through the center of the plates to accommodate the tube. Now this is deceptively tricky because these plates are very thin and brittle and prone to cracking. You can of course buy heavier duty plastic plates if your budget extends that far, and if you can find them. But you can actually do it with these thin ones as long as you use a little care. Sir, you know, what's that one thing that starts with an R that we never use? Restraint? Yeah, yeah, restraint. Fortunately, these plates have this little divot so it's easy to find the center. Then carefully drill a guide hole through the center with a rotary tool, and then use a hole saw to do the rest. But take it slow and don't apply too much pressure. Let the teeth do the work. 
The tube is one and a quarter inches in diameter, so I used a one and a quarter inch hole saw. Simple enough. I should also warn you that this step is very tedious, and you will be tempted to stack a bunch of plates together and drill them all at once. I strongly advise against this. For one thing, it's easy for the drill to go in slightly crooked, and that means the hole in the plates at the bottom of the stack won't be perfectly centered, and that'll cause you problems when you put the whole thing together later. Also, the drill, and especially the hole saw, melt the plastic as they go through and binds the plates together. Now you can pry them apart, but it tends to make them crack a lot. Once the holes were drilled, I cleaned up the edges by using the drum sander attachment on my Dremel. Just be careful not to widen the holes too much or the plates will slip around. As I've mentioned repeatedly, these plates crack easily, and over the course of drilling and sanding them, I did make minor cracks in about 10 of them, but they won't be visible once the whole thing is assembled. I dusted all of the plates with a light coat of silver spray paint. Don't go too heavy and make a thick coat because you don't want to totally obscure the light. I painted the top part of the plates, which will be the inside of each dish. That way you won't have to worry about the paint flaking off. I used 30 plates total, stacked in a way to make 15 of these dishes. Since you've got the drill out, uh, let's go ahead and prep the coffee can that we're using as the base. I don't know why, but I always think these have a nicely industrial sort of look. You just need another one and a quarter inch hole here in the top to feed the tube through, and a hole in the back big enough to feed the power cord through. Now here's a trick I use to find the center of the bottom of the can, since it's unmarked. The lid has one of those same little divots that the plates have. It's common to most molded plastic parts. So I drilled a hole through that divot in the lid, put the lid on the bottom of the can, and use that hole to mark the center. Since the lid is black, I'm just going to go ahead and use it as is without any modifications, since it won't be too visible. The power cord for this particular set of lights came with a nifty feature, namely that the rig can disconnect from the plug right here meaning that I was able to drill a smaller hole. If, however, you buy a set of lights that doesn't have this feature, you'll need to drill a hole large enough to fit the plug, but that's fine. Drill it in the back, and it won't be visible anyway. These plastic balls come in two halves so that you can fill them with something and then put the halves back together to make a Christmas ornament. The first thing I did was sand off the little loop you would use to hang it. Then I gave it a coat of the silver spray paint, ran some glue along the inside edge, pressed the halves together, and let it dry. I want the light to extend up into this ball, so I drilled a guide hole right here where the loop used to be, since that spot still looked a little rough anyway. Then widened the hole with this cone grinder. I didn't want to use large drill bits because, just like the plates, this plastic is brittle, and large drill bits tend not to be very gentle. The hole is wide enough to fit the tip of the light wand, but small enough that it will be completely covered by the tube and be invisible. Once all of the parts were prepped, the first thing I did was glue the ball to the top of the tube. Once that was dry and on there good and solid, I slid the plates on with a few drops of glue along the rims to help keep them together. I inserted the tube into the can, and between the ball on the top and the can on the bottom, there was enough pressure to clamp the plates together until the glue dried. Now at this point I discovered that the tube was still slightly too long, so I just measured it, marked it, and cut it to the exact length I needed. I also made sure to punch a small hole and cut a slit at the bottom to allow the cord to come out of the tube neatly. Then I simply inserted the light wand up the tube and all the way up into the ball. Okay, that was probably more long-winded and detailed than it needed to be, but as I mentioned, this was actually my third attempt at making this prop, so I may have gotten a little confused about which version I was thinking of and talking about. The first version used 12-inch plates instead of 7-inch plates and had large spacers in between, and the end result was very wonky and wobbly and crooked. Frankly, I may have gone a little too cheap with the materials this time. The second one used these smaller 7-inch plates stacked more tightly together and was a lot better, but I made the mistake of stacking the plates and drilling them in batches, which made the whole thing crooked. 
But since I had enough parts left over, I decided to give it one more go and hope that the third time was the charm. I think this makes for a cool background prop and really fits into the whole mad scientist motif that I love so much. Seriously though, I am running out of room for all of these things. Not that I'm complaining though. If you liked this Power Pylon video, you can always empower me and this channel by liking, subscribing, and commenting, and by checking out my other videos. I have a lot of other projects like this to show off. Hey, there's more! Uh, Much more! Woo! As well as videos on a variety of other topics, so who knows, you may see something that you like. Thanks again, and I'll see you here next time.